Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome back to Writing Wednesdays and today we're going to talk about character profiles. I think characters are probably the hardest thing to write when you're starting to write a novel, in fiction, whatever, because you're literally making a person up. So you definitely want to get to know your characters in as much detail as possible because their personalities will dictate how they react to situations, how they react to controversy, how they overcome obstacles, and the things they would actually say in these situations. So anyway, let's jump in and talk about it, how to write a character profile so you can get to know these people that you just made up in your head. And before we get started, if you're new here, my name is Chris and I'm working on my debut fantasy novel, The Crimson Gods, very, very close to getting the first manuscript done and starting the editing process. So really, really excited about that. So if you dig this type of content and it brings you value and maybe, you know, at least get you off your ass to start writing your damn book, feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell as well so you're notified when I drop a new video. So anyway, what is a character profile and how will it help you write your damn story? It's literally just a list of traits and characteristics of your characters and specific detail, I might add, down to their fears and dreams, their hopes and aspirations. But also really quickly, I think I should mention, no matter how detailed you get with this character profile, you don't have to use it all in your novel. Now, what I'm going to do here for this video is I'm going to use an example from my book, The Crimson Gods. I'm going to use one of my main characters and the character profile I filled out for him. But I wanted to remind everybody because there's a lot of good videos out there, a lot of good articles out there about character profiles and how you should do them. Keep in mind here, you don't absolutely have to do this. It's just another writing tool. And also keep in mind, it kind of depends on the kind of writer you are. So if you're more of the gardener type where you kind of plant a seed and kind of see where the story goes, you may just fill out a few details and kind of see what kind of characters you develop. On the other hand, if you're an architect type, you may want to get down to the nitty gritty details of where the mole is on her ass and what she enjoys for breakfast. And again, I think the most important thing for having character profiles is so you know your characters better than anyone else because you're literally making them up out of thin air. So then all these characteristics and traits of all these characters will help dictate where your plot goes. And of course, you can always use these character sheets to kind of reference as you're writing your story because they will dictate how that character will react in certain situations. So anyway, we're going to use one of my main characters named Amari from the Crimson Gods. And I like to do these in three basic sections. Now you'll see all kinds of different, you know, templates out there and suggestions. You can do it in five sections. You can do just a straight list, whatever. I find it easier this way. So my main three sections are the basics, such as, you know, their physical appearance, eye color, if you choose to put that in there, what they look like, their sex, their height, their race, all that good stuff. Then section two will cover relationships and family, you know, their friends, their family, their mother, their father, sisters, brothers, uncles, aunts, cousins, roommate, anything you can think of because family life really affects a person as you all know. And then finally, section three, the most important section, in my opinion, the personal section, and this is all the little detailed questions. Basically, it's a questionnaire to ask yourself, you know, what do these people fear? What do they love? What are their aspirations, etc. So with all that said, let's jump in and take a look at Amari from the Crimson Gods. All right, here we are with Amari from the Crimson Gods. This is one of my main characters here in my upcoming novel. And you can see here, I have uh, the character name here, and then I have section one basics, as I said before. Uh, just simple stuff here, sex, male, age, 19, race, Ethorian. And then I have a little note here uh, about Ethorians because this is when I was coming up with all this. I had kind of a general idea in mind of what this world would look like and I did a map and started creating, you know, different places and names. And then they kind of decided, you know, where these people are going to be from. So what I have here is some background on his race and where he's from. And that is Ethoria is one of the original 12 realms of Osgoth. Its culture is based on African mythology and a touch of Greek. Think of a medieval Wakanda of sorts. And that's just for me. They are a monotheistic people that worship the goddess of Earth named Gaziel, who is also a member of the larger religion still found around Osgoth called the Thirteen Aspects. In their lore, Gaziel founded the kingdom after their ancestors escaped torment from the east in their native land called Afaria. Legends say she destroyed a fleet of ships and the Afarian forces alone. Then she ruled as queen for a hundred years before sending back to the heavens. So anyway, just for me, a little bit of a backstory when I first created this area called Athoria, and now I have it a lot more detailed based off this basic description. Next, we have his height, I think 5'11". I think that fits his body style. And by the way, uh, guys, I already actually have artwork for this character that I just can't show yet. So uh, I, already, I already can kind of see him and really bring him to life as with the artwork. So anyway, I'm really excited about that. Just want to throw that out there. You could, if you have artwork already or maybe a sketch or whatever, you could actually throw that in here as well. Anyway, we move on to body type, uh, slender but toned due to spending a lot of time on the sea as a fisherman since around age 10. So, you know, he's 5'11", doing all the sailing and pulling up nets out of the water, all that good stuff since he was 10 years old with his father. So he's going to be in pretty good damn shape. And next we have appearance. I have long black dreadlocks and a full beard, light brown eyes, and a medium
medium dark ebony skin tone. He typically wears standard fisherman's clothing such as a gamison to keep warm at sea. Casually, he often wears traditional Athorian clothing such as a dashiki style shirt in combination with typical Osgothian attire. His sword is always on his hip. So there's his basic appearance. Now, I'm not gonna mention every single thing he ever wears all the time, but when I'm in a particular scene, this gives me kind of reference of what he's going to generally look like and generally be wearing in case it's important to the scene itself. And moving on to section two, relationship and family. So the first part here is family. Amari lives with his sister, Abana, in Waterside Landing in Southern Vegamore. Point two, Amari's father, Amaru, helped the last king of Osgoth, William Blackson, fight in a conflict known as the Last Rebellion. William had led an army to help defend Athoria previously, so they became close friends. So what this does is gives me a little bit of backstory on why Amari's down here in the mainland, because with this guy, his father is going to be a big deal in his life and help drive you know, what he believes his legacy will be, as you will be able to see when we get down to the personal section. And next, as far as a little bit more backstory on the family, Amaru, his father, later left Athoria to escape politics and theism for a simpler life as he enjoyed the sea. William granted them a small keep on the shores of the Middle Sea named Waterside Landing, where he brought his children. Athorians are considered all descended from the clan Ghazi, so typically have no surname. Amaru, however, his father, took an honorary name, Docksider, as William granted him lordship. Amari spent his childhood in Vegamar growing up with William's eldest son, Sirik, and Amari trained in sword, lance, and spear and was educated alongside Sirik, then the crown prince. Amari picked up the nickname Doc as a shortened version of his surname. And I think that's really important too as far as names really quickly. I think it's important to have something that you could possibly pull a nickname from. There's a lot of people that do that, a lot of cultures that do that, have nicknames. So when I'm picking names for these characters, I actually think about how could I shorten this to a nickname that their really close personal friends and family would call them. And next we have friends. Amari's best friend remains Sirik, although they don't see each other as often as they used to. After Amari's father died, he now stays at sea fishing to carry on his father's legacy. And next we have relationships, single, but he's not necessarily wanting to be single. He's just really busy trying to fill his father's shoes. After his death, his sister Abana is trying to get him to settle down. So that gives me, the author, at least some basic dynamics into his home life. He's got a sister. You know, she's always saying, you know, you need to settle down or whatever. He's still trying to figure out his new purpose in life because his father died and he wanted to carry on his legacy. So he's trying to find his new purpose and where the hell does he go from here? And finally, section three, personal. Now this is going to be basically a questionnaire and I'm only going to use what I need here for my fantasy story. Now this is obviously going to be a little bit different if you're talking about a different setting. Mine is medieval kind of fantasy where you may be writing something very contemporary with cities and all that stuff. So in the template I will provide at the end of this video, it will have more questions for you to fill out if you choose to use them. Anyway, for my section three personal, I have fears. This is very, very important. I think fear drives a lot of thing in people's lives. So I think this is one of the more important questions. You wanna list out his or her fears because that's going to determine what decisions they make. Are they going to cower in a situation? Or are they going to face that fear? So I think this is one of the more important questions in the personal section. Anyway, for Amari, I have fears. Failing his father's legacy, is he good enough or doing enough? So he's not really feeling whole after his father died. He's not really sure what to do. Where does he go from here? And I also have in here embarrassing his family. So he's kind of scared to do something stupid to mess up that legacy. And next we have strong personality traits, a good heart, proud, intelligent, deep thinker, cares deeply for his family and friends, honest, witty, and loyal. And then we have the following weakest personality traits, a bit gullible, honest, sometimes to a fault, can be illogical when he's emotional, doesn't like to say no because it could disappoint his friends and family. So these are very important questions too, their strengths and weaknesses as people. And for example, honesty can be both. Honesty is a good thing generally, but if you're too honest, that can get you in trouble. So that could be considered a negative trait. So keep those in mind. And at the very least, I think you need those three things in a character profile. And next we have needs of the character to be appreciated, needs to find his purpose again after his father's death, ambitions, unsure, still dealing with his father's recent death, he left politics for the life of a simple fisherman. Interest and hobbies. He likes fishing, sailing, business, and walking through markets. So basically the simple life. You know, like I said, he, he kind of learned this from his father. As you can see, his father's a real big driver throughout his life here. And it's going to help determine the outcome of his character arc. And education, I think this is important too. This determines on how people will act and say and how they speak, etc. depending again on your genre and setting. So for Amari's education in this, you know, medieval fantasy setting, he is taught by master preceptor Galen in Wolfpine. He didn't really have that hard of a life, say, compared to a commoner in this world. And he's going to speak more properly and all that good stuff as well. And he's going to get references that a commoner would simply not because they don't have the education. And next we have religion. I think this is really important too, depending on your genre. So for Amari in religion, 
religion I have. Family subscribe to a Thorian religion which has no specific name, but equates to worshiping only one goddess of the 13 aspects, Gazael, the goddess of earth. However, Amari himself is more agnostic. So again, just a little bit of backstory there. Athorians worship, you know, one goddess where him and his family left that, and now he's really more of an agnostic. It's kind of more modern times in his little world, you know, maybe prayers didn't work for him or whatever. So he's not really an atheist, but he doesn't necessarily believe that someone's gonna answer his prayers. And next we have what drives your character, honoring his father and carrying on his legacy. As you can see here with Amari, a couple of these things repeat because his father's always on his mind. It's a very recent death in this story, and that's why it kind of is really overbearing in this list. Now say if this was five years down the road after his father's death, may not be as big a factor as it is right now in the timeline. And finally, we have what is standing in your character's way. And again, I put himself, he's not sure what he wants. So basically that's telling me as the author, as I go through this story, that he has not found himself since his father's death. He's not sure which direction to go. He thinks he's honoring his legacy by keeping the simple life as a fisherman, as opposed to being a lord in politics and all that good stuff as well. But he has yet to really find himself because maybe he's kind of you know afraid to step out of that comfort zone. Again, going back to his fears, because he may do something that may fuck up his father's legacy. And for me, that's all I have for my character profile for Amari. Now you can get a lot more detail than that. There's plenty more questions on there as well in the uh, template I'll provide you. There will be a link in the description below where you can download that template, or you can just go to my website, chrismchristian.com, head over to the resources page at the top, and then under the writing section, click a character profile template and download it there. And by the way, while you're there at the website, chrismchristian.com, go ahead and sign up for our newsletter and get updates on the Crimson Gods, as well as any other news, videos, and projects. It is a PDF file on my website. You can copy and paste it over to whatever you're using and then fill it in as you need it and delete the questions you don't need and add questions that you want to add depending on how detailed you want to get. Just a friendly reminder though, don't make this a substitute for actually writing your damn book. You can spend hours and hours or even days and weeks writing a perfect character profile and never get a damn word on the page. And you can click right over here for more writing videos or you can click right over here for the Mandalorian season two breakdowns and reviews. And if you dig what I do here, please give these videos a like, comment, and a share. And of course, be sure to subscribe to get everything and click that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.